Advantage of this opportunity and avoid embarrassment because it will chase around kana kushaiwe hoping you could have a chicken. Play your part with the country already. You can see you provide them a safe season. Kana kamu no expect you to go away. Kana we we okay show away. Tauri na na ina o. Kuti mo badara se chicken chicken juri easy ya kuamuri imu imu. Itai pa doko pa doko. Kushika ma ite complete kana finish chicken 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 you. Harare to achieve a world class city status by 2025. Has given new reasons why we thought we should talk to you. Obviously, you know what has been happening in the political cycles, especially at political rallies, which have substituted the duty of parliament. and even of government to be the duty of a political rally. We have also seen, whether they want to call it the usurpation of executive power, by political figures at political rallies. We have also seen decisions that are supposed to be taken by courts of law being taken at political rallies. And uh, as people who fought and brought democracy in Zimbabwe, we find ourselves disturbed. And the obvious question that we ask which we think everyone is asking is where are we going to zvino tishitsa kupi but before i get that far i want to talk about chimchinonzi zano pf zano z n z a n u can belong to anyone, any civilian, any restrictee, any detainee, but the PF belongs to Zipran Zang. Yes. Mm. So, there is, no, there is no person, regardless of rank and level, who has authority to say he or she owns ZANU PF. They can own ZANU Mwenje, they can own ZANU whatever they want. But the patriotic front is for the fighters. Yes. 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 So let it be clear from today that whoever thinks he's going to take ZANU PF away from us is just playing a joke. But I would also want to say to you, when the president says war veterans or fighters that is still serving in the army have no political role in ZANU-PF, I don't want to say he is lying. I will say he has forgotten what he said in 1976. He said, the gun shall free the country. That is creating a vote. And the same gun shall stand guard of the, both the vote and the masses. So that is the contract. When the war veterans talk authoritatively <laughs> about ZANU-PF, They are talking about a vote that they created, which they must guard and direct. <laughs> But unfortunately, when this was said, the first lady was only 10 years old. <laughs> and maybe she wants her husband to tell her that this is the contract that is there. War veterans also know very well that the attack on Mnangagwa 
and today on Shingadue is not directed at those two. It is attacked, it is uh, uh, aimed at the totality of war veterans. Mm. Yes. We know that very soon they will want to disturb army, army structures. They want to do away with everyone. But unfortunately, they will not do away with the history that we created for ourselves. Mm. It must also be clear to anyone that all of us who went to war, he went on his own accord, on his own accord, on her own accord, no one went to join the other. Mm -hmm. yes. We did not go to join in Komosi war or Mugabe's war. We went to join the war of the people of Zimbabwe. Yes. Yes. And because of that, we have a fundamental duty mm -hmm. to see that total democracy, independence, freedom, and rule of law is observed because this is what we did. And in any case, it is these people you see here who have a social contract with the people. Yes. yes. It is not Mr. Mugabe, it is not Mr. Uh, the late Comrade Nkomo, because they never politicized people at home. It is these people that persuaded the people of Zimbabwe to agree to support the armed struggle mm -hmm. because they had promised to deliver something to them. And it is the delivering point that we are fighting for which unfortunately the likes of Baraka Sukuere, Vana Jonathan Moyo and these other small ladies do not know. <laughs> so and the chapter Zingua, I want my chairman to talk to you. But maybe what you will say is that we are the national executive that is never going to be destroyed at a political rally. Mm -hmm. That is lawful. Mm -hmm. That has got the support of the law of Zimbabwe. Mm -hmm. We are not going to be dissolved at a political rally. Mm -hmm. We are not going to withdraw Kana Kanambuzi Ijikwiza Maziro. Atire Giku Zarava Namumba. So we are going to call all, all war veterans. The duty of Mchangwa's executive now is to unite every war veteran, every person that participated in the liberation struggle, every person that lost his or her property because of the war, to come together and decide where Zimbabwe should go. Yes. Yeah. There will be a day the so called my youth one of it my comrades are two year to get a game time a panel less than six sakam gonna pack as i will be better Pakazari wani wani, atusa titawa uza wanawedu kutimukawona munu oh, umana, mukande mafumro. But we are going to do it from now. Yes. And then do yes. yes. Doko wasa wana kutuwane wanawedu. Wanawedu wa zikanda pachemberi ni madara ifumro mo shut up. Because enough is enough. Yes. Saka, ndo nyati na makomrezi ese, vese waka supporta hondo, vese wataka famba nao, tirikuzo unga na mungu kwa nzura. Towiri anazo kuita. And the chairman, Vakataura, the last time, at Saturday, a presidential political candidate. Mm, yes, yes. But G40 has got a. Presidential. They have many of them. Mm. But the war veterans are not going to vote for any G40 candidate, yes. including the envelope, the foil that covers them. He was very clear and we are very clear 
We will only campaign and vote for ZANU-PF if ZANU-PF goes to an extraordinary Congress and choose a successor who will take over after Mgabe, because we know Mgabe is going to go yes. one day. 94 is not a joke. Yes. Mm. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you, thank you, Comrade SG, for putting it <coughs> forthright. Uh, he has touched on something before I, I got my formal address. When I was in the Politburo and when I was in the Cabinet, and it is an argument which has often been repeated, that we are a, we are a dying stock, the war veterans. We are a dying stock, you know, you know after five, we have fought being so many in the 80s, 70s and 80s. Now there are so few, uh, the youth are, are so many. This is a delusional, it's a, it's, a, it's, a, it's a delusional argument. It's not an argument based on fact. There is nothing which says the G40 is a permanent generation any more than the war veterans were not a permanent generation. Yeah. In every society you pass on to the next yeah, generation. That's true. What is America today as a modern democratic country is the work of George Washington. <laughs> Three centuries down the line, America is guided, guided by the ethos of George Washington. It is the institutional memory of mm. America making history yes. in the 1770s as the first modern democratic revolution, which makes America what it is today. So there is nothing which says that we are the, 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 our, our, our heritage cannot be inherited by the youths, because that is the history of Zimbabwe. So that argument, it's a G40 argument, it's it, it is based on a, a, a desire to grab power and dividing society. We don't accept it. Just as the G40 will not, be, uh, will not be there in two or three generations from now, there will be other Zimbabweans who will take over. Why do they think they are, they are permanent themselves and we are not permanent? It is the beauty and the durability of the ideas a, the nobleness of our ideas as young people, which is the backbone of Zimbabwe's society today. And that will endure more than the, the, the claims by the G40 that we are, we are a, 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 a dying species. We are not, because everybody always starts the history of their country from the most glorious page in, 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 in national endeavor. And that was done by the war veterans when we were young. When we were even younger than the people who are claiming to be youths today. We went when we were between 12 and 19 and 20 to fight that war. Yes. Mm -hmm. So we have been young before. Mm. <laughs> they were also, they are young today, but they were. Then secondly, we dismiss the argument that a collection of youths constitute a, 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 a party institution, just a mere collection of youths gathered together. No, the party has got very specific constitutions. There's been an element of trying to use ad hoc arrangements within the party to go outside the party structures. First, the use of the interface rallies, which were supposed to culminate in the expulsion of the vice president. That was an ad hoc arrangement. We salute the people of Zimbabwe because by the third and fourth interface rally in, Masu in, in, in Masuingo and Midlands, and finally in Bindura, the people have seen, had seen what those rallies were meant to. And the people who were coming to those rallies became defiant. That's why there is anger in the G40 that the people were supporting the VP. Yes. Maybe they were not supporting the VP, they were just resisting the nonsense mm -hmm. which was coming from being abused mm -hmm. by the G40. Mm -hmm. The party cannot run on ad hoc arrangements mm -hmm. where certain pronouncements are made which contravene the Constitution. Mm -hmm. And related to that fact is the New ad hoc arrangement coming from nowhere called the Youth Council, which met last, last yeah, Friday, today. which became another instrument in mm -hmm. trying to deal with the, the VP mm -hmm. and the army and the war veterans. Mm -hmm. So here yeah, there are institutions cropping up from everywhere by the G40 because they've got a purpose. The president is a lawyer. He knows the constitution of the party. He has said he's a lawyer. Please, let's use the, the institutions of the party to address issues within the party. This attendance at rallies and, the, and, 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 and the ad hoc arrangements, it does not befit 
a 94 year old head of state who became an icon by making the rule of law the centerpiece of Zimbabwe. He should go back to what made him get a name mm -hmm. in the country and regionally and across the world, sticking to the rule of law. And that starts, charity begins at home, it should start within Zan PF. Yeah. No more. I mean, the embarrassment of going to an ad hoc arrangement where there is a whole litany of accusations, a whole long list of things which the president is being prescribed to do by G40 people. Then having the same head of state coming to deny those things and dismiss them. I mean, how do you run a modern country like that, Mr. Comrade President? The Bindura thing. Uh, the whole crowd was being around, hate Mchangwa, hate the VP, hate this, hate that, hate that. It was a hate parade by the G40. Now the president having to debunk, to say I'm not part of the head parade. Why does the president allow himself to be embarrassed by such people? And there is a constitution in this country. There is no way in the constitution where there is the position of the first lady. Mm -hmm. Sure. There is no way in the constitution. There is no way in the constitution where there is the position of the first family. I repeat. We had Salim Gabi as the wife of the president during the war. When all of us went to the front to fight, there was no way in Mwenje, which carried the constitution of the party, a provision that we were fighting for the first family. The same thing did not exist on the Zipra side. Mm. Why is this new invention called the first family being bended about by the G40? Mm. It is an instrument to try to usurp power. We will not accept that usurpation of power using things which do not exist. <laughs> We, 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 we are very legal as war veterans. We are the ones who brought the constitution of Zimbabwe. So we are a constitutional republic. And I always want to remind Zimbabweans, before Zanla forces and Zipra forces agreed to go to democratic elections, there is no guerrilla liberation movement in history which had accepted to go to national elections. They said the power comes from the barrel of the gun, we shoot our way to power. That's what the Chinese did. That's what uh, the, the Cubans did. That was the Vietnamese did. That was the Koreans did. That was the Algerians did. All those, the, Mozambique. the Mozambicans, all of them, they said, we take our power because we fought for it and we were organizing the people. But Zanla and Zipra, because we were so confident and we were ultra modern. We accepted to say, even if we are militarily on the verge of victory, we are prepared to go to the election so that the people can go and decide mm. the, our legitimacy. Mm. And sure enough, we were vindicated in 1970, 1980 by an overwhelming victory, which saw Ngomo and President Mugabe, Dr. Ngomo and President Mugabe become the undoubted victors of the election. So we have a very, very solid democratic tradition mm. Mm. and we have maintained that solid democratic tradition mm. we are not a leninist state a leninist state is one like the others i mentioned where since you acquired power militarily because you're a guerrilla movement you justify your power because you won military victory no 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 <laughs> we went the other way mm -hmm. we spiced the military victory by electoral victory mm -hmm. so we have a very, very proud de tradition of democracy as war veterans mm. in this country. And you are saying the democratic space being constantly being tested by the G40. They want to be pushed. They want generals fired from a rally. They want general, the vice president fired in midnight cabal meetings, a caucuses. They want a youth council to dismiss the whole leadership of, 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 the, of the party. We see votes of no confidence being dismissed when they are constitutional within the party. Yet others are admitted when they are, you know, because of the, the dictates of a faction. Comrade President, can you go back to have the constitution of this country be respected? Also the constitution of the party be respected because we are constitutional democracy. We are saying this because we were accused that we were biased towards the VP we biased toward the army. And because he was the Minister of Justice, we could not 
take our issues to the courts out of caution, out of discretion, because we are afraid that when we go there, they are going to whom they are saying somebody who is claimed to be their own man. We are very happy with the cabinet reshuffle on that score that a comrade who was in the CIO in our intelligence organization, very, very smart. I know Comrade Bonyongo from St. Augustine's. He was two years behind me at Tsampe in the 80s, in the 70s. He later joined the war. I went earlier when I was coming from university. I know him, very smart, and he's <coughs> one of our chief trainers during the war, and he came to the army and has done a good job at CIO. We are very happy that he has been promoted to be Minister of Justice. We always happy when comrades are promoted. The beauty is that now we want to take challenges about the extra constitutional behavior of the G40. We are now going to have court. Yes. We do hope that the G40 will live to the test of legality yeah. mm. by accepting to go and defend their actions before the judges of Zimbabwe. Because this state is a constitutional democracy with a legislature, an executive, and a judiciary. Mm -hmm. Now we will be all the things which the G40 have been doing, in war, including the water cannoning of the war veterans mm -hmm. two years ago. Mm -hmm. We now want them to be tested before the courts of Zimbabwe. Mm -hmm. This is good because it strengthens the democratic tradition of yes. the country. It builds the sinews of democracy. Mm -hmm. So the G40, get ready. Mm -hmm. We will be taking you to the courts. Mm -hmm. And now there is no prospect of saying we are going there because Mnangagwa is the, is the Minister of Justice. No. Mm -hmm. We want to see whether they can repeat the same accusation with Comrade Bunyongwe, who is now the new Minister of Justice. Mm -hmm. So watch this space. <laughs> there will be a lot of play in the courts there with the G40. And that means even all their conduct, henceforth, we will be subjecting it to the scrutiny of the judges. Yes. We want, we want a democracy which can be tested before the, erud the erudite, educated minds of the country which have been designated with that job by the constitution of Zimbabwe. So we will be in the courts, Game believe on. you me. Game, Game on. on about their conduct. Yes. They will be asked to defend themselves before the judges about what they've done to date. And what happens within ZANU-PF, it's a private club. The supreme law is from the parliament of Zimbabwe. Mm. So there will be no insulation of the behavior because it is bullet bill of ZANU-PF. It's a private club. Mm -hmm. It must subject itself to the dictates of the Zimbabwe. constitution of Zimbabwe. Yes. Mm -hmm. So we will be doing that. We also take this occasion to thank Comrade Chinga Dube. He did a fantastic job as a tried and tested kid of the party. We welcome Comrade Matema. He's another comrade from the war that is the Minister of the War Veterans. We are open. We do, we do hope that he will have the same courage to do what is right, as was exhibited by Comrade Chinga Dube. We give no grudge about him assuming his new job. We are very happy about that. We also welcome the other war veterans who have been uh, put into the cabinet. We are always happy when war veterans do get into government because somehow this government has never run with war veterans. Although the accusation has been that it is, a, it's a, it's a, it is a from the liberation movement. Most of the people who have made it and become very wealthy <laughs> since, you know, particularly since 2000, they have nothing to do with war and that is the G40. They have abused their ministerial position to amass wealth at a level which this country has never known. Even when the economy is collapsing, yeah, they've amassed wealth that no war veteran is, is as rich as they are mm. today. So this is something which we say we are happy with. For, we congratulate the new war veterans who have joined the cabinet. We are looking forward to cooperate with them in, 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 in the agenda, which rectifies the history of neglect, the history of abject poverty, the history of marginalization, the history of discrimination against the war veterans. Each time we, have to, we try to say something, 
there is the a mantra, the gun is, should not command politics, command mm. politics. <laughs> this is mm. nonsense. Mm. I have never carried a gun, neither have any of these people who were demobilized. We are just ordinary citizens of Zimbabwe with the history. Mm. We are being stigmatized not to take part in politics because of our history. That's not allowed under the Constitution. That too will well, eventually yeah. be challenged yeah. before the court. We, we look at the cabinet, we don't want to preempt people who have got their job, but we are struck by the alignment which exists between the new cabinet and the re recent e elections directorate. There was an elections directorate announced in the ZANU PF party, and it so happens that most of the prominent people in the new cabinet are also featuring on that elections directorate. We do hope that they are not going to be trying to abuse the state to try to achieve a factional end. Because that too shall be challenged. That too shall be challenged and we look forward to the Minister of Justice to facilitate such challenges so that the democracy of Zimbabwe is truly tested before the courts. Now, confidence is important when a cabinet reshuffle is done so that it frees up the energy of the people of a country in anticipation of going to do things which are greater for their own prosperity. I'm not very sure that this cabinet has engendered that confidence, reshuffle. I have to be, make fleeting remarks about some two people who are quite prominent in that cabinet, <laughs> which is Chombo and Kasukwe. No, I would start with those. Between them, they have 17 years of being the ministers of local government of Zimbabwe. Continuous between the two of them. In any country, investment which grows the economy, which grows the GDP, starts at local government level. At the ward, at the village, at the city, at the town. That's where your investment starts. These people, for 17 years, have no investment record of any note. <laughs> There is no new city which has been built under their, guide, uh, under their, their, their guard as ministers of local government. Now, let me give you a comparison. We become independent in, 17, in 1980. China starts its modernization in 79. So we are just, we missed each other by a year. 37 years later, China has got 100 cities with over 1 million people. It is the second largest economy in the whole world. The prosperity of China is palpable. It is now becoming even challenging America. This is what China's focused leadership has achieved in 37 years of freedom. Of those 37 years, 17 years in our instance have been accounted for by Kasukwere and Chombo as ministers of local <laughs> government. They have nothing to show for all those 17 years. No new city has ever been built in Zimbabwe. No new sky. You know this. Have you been to Nepal, Takawira, and Yepet Chitep? There is a building there which is multi-story, which never gets finished. A minister Chombo started it. He goes in the morning to his minister of local government, he sees it being constructed. He leaves in the evening, it's being constructed. Until he leaves that ministry, it's being constructed. Kasukwere has been there, it's still being constructed. One building, a skyscraper. Now, this is a country which should make progress. I'm not, I'm hoping that the new jobs which they have now been given <laughs> can inspire confidence which goes beyond a, a perpetual a, 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 you know, erection, a perpetual build, you know, building up of, one st of a multi-story block in the whole country. <laughs> That's what they imagine. Now, this is something which is very sad. I don't know whether this new job which they have can make them any more, and just before the elections, you know, Comrade, the, the, the judge president has already said there are more, no more ele, ele, uh, by elections. So this cabinet reshuffle, I don't know, maybe the, there should have been a, a leaf book from the same uh, Rita Makarao to say we are getting into the election mood. Unless it is an election cabinet. <laughs> now, if it is an election cabinet, they have got 17 years of not delivering anything. And now they have less than 12, 17 months, they have less than 12 months to deliver something in an economy. Yee! This is a very tall order. I don't know whether that will create, inspire any new confidence with the electorate about the G40. Because we have consistently 
said the G40 has no clue as to how a modern economy should be run. And I was in cabinet, and I know it, and I know that. So my misgivings are based on fact. The other minister is Mr. Jonathan Moon. He wants to be a doctor. He wants to be a scientist. He wants to be every, a spokesman of the party. He wants to, he, all jobs which have nothing to do with what has been assigned to in cabinet. He knows the relationship between him and, the, and his doctor. It's confidential. And this person is number two in the country. That information, going beyond all the professional made ethics, becomes the washing linen of the country. And, doctor, uh, and our doctor, by propaganda, J Jonathan Moon, wades into it. Now he has got the eye of the, all the professional people in Zimbabwe. We welcome and applaud the condemnation of the Medical and Allied Profession Council against the, the, the utterances of Jonathan Moore concerning HIV and the status of patients. It has nothing to do with him, and it has nothing to do, I and mean, you cannot use factional politics to go against accepted medical ethics mm. of, in the country. Mm. That's true. We all know the ravages of HIV. We all know, we, we know we tiripa Chirongwa. The most common way do you find is Chirongwa because since this way it came. And the doctors have to grapple with all those things to make sure that AIDS patients have not been stigmatized. Now we have a whole man who is actually in charge of that medical and allied profession council as a minister, because he's the minister of higher education. And he goes public and he says those things. I mean, some people should have the decency to resign. But you know, he is a, he is a spy who was a, a traitor, who was a war deserter. He has got the morals of an alley cat. <laughs> Absolutely no, none at all. You know, I've said if he goes to, to hell today, the devil will be expelled because they will elect Jonathan to replace him. <laughs> <laughs> a man who is utterly evil by nature, and it is being shown by his attitude towards HIV patients, simply because he's singling out an individual. Can the president have the distance of firing this man? I mean, maybe you can tolerate because, you know, Zim Def, but can you tolerate such kind of conduct in this modern day where HIV and stigmatization is now a matter of history by our society? Why does he keep on tolerating this man? With the morals of an ally, you know he's, you know he's the pits, Jonathan, but he keeps on being entertained. Something he has to give at some stage, and this outrage about HIV status is really something which breaks the camel's spec. I hope something we implore the president out of decency, out of the whole world's respect for Zimbabwe's record in HIV fighting. Can you act for a change about this man? who is the much indulged minister. Comrades, the people continue to suffer. Now there is no currency. There is no need. We, we all fought for prosperity. That's what we aspire to as young people. We do, we, 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 we have our compact with the people of Zimbabwe about prosperity. We would like the people of Zimbabwe to prosper us. We want, we were looking forward to the next election People of Zimbabwe can choose a path which brings prosperity back, which brings the diaspora back, which brings in all the, the former white diaspora and the, and the so that we can all be engaged in a collective effort to rebuild the country. But I can't see how these uh, perpetual failures, these ministers, ever delivering on that, particularly in the next couple of months when they failed for so many years. So ultimately, the people of Zimbabwe have to use the vote. We want them to be judicious in the selection of the candidates who will represent them in the next elections. Mm. If the G40 tries to impose the candidates, we call upon all the nation to resist such kind of imposition. Yes. And the battle has been made so easy because there is, a fam there is one family, family where somebody is being always being extolled is being superhuman by the wife. And that, of course, has been going on in the rallies. It went on on the, first, on the meeting of the Youth Council. Now there are 14 million Zimbabweans. I can assure you that 7 million marriages are assured out of those 7, 14 million Zimbabweans. Because we are half, half, half feminine, half male. 
I want all the spouses to have pride in their husbands and in their wives. So that you also use the vote to make sure that the pride which others abuse in their marriages, mm. you use it judiciously to make sure that we have got re good representatives. Mm. So we are calling on the couples of Zimbabwe to start campaigning in their bedrooms against the next people who should be the leaders of this country. Because one family has made it, has made it a point of extolling their super marriage status. Eh, that's what it is. So now we want everybody to feel that his marriage is super. In your bedrooms, in whatever you are doing as couples, please start debating. And this is democracy. We are just appealing for people to be democratic. It's the same with what the, the, the appeal to all the people, to all the, the, the there is this mantra of with the youth has said, the youth has said, mm. in a country where every family lost a member during the war, there is somebody who is a, a, a child of a war veteran. <laughs> in every family, a man who is a child of a war veteran, is a child of a war veteran. So every family in Zimbabwe has got somebody who was lost in that war. Saka makazwaru wa nema veteran. Wanawe ma war veteran, look at this constant uh, abuse of the tradition of your parents. Wherever you are, be like your parents. We defied Ian Smith it, when we were at a tender age, and he was more powerful. Defy this nonsense. Start mobilizing as children of the war veterans against the constant haranguing, abuse, tirades, and all sorts of scoldings which have been going on against the war veterans. Yeah. Take, it, take it as your own struggle and make sure that it is expressed through the vote. People who cannot pass the criteria of patriotism based on the tradition of the war veterans and what your parents fought for should not be allowed to be in the door of power by an election. It's not. And we are also appealing to the new Minister of Justice to make sure that the BVR vote is not only fair, it is seen to be fair. We don't want a situation like in Kenya where the electoral system, which is supposed to aid the transparency of the vote to reflect what is happening on the ground, to ever be doubted by the electorate, because that doesn't create confidence. So the Minister of Justice, we want him to work very closely with the, elect the, with the, with the, the Electoral Supervisory Commission and the, the ZEC and everybody to give us a clean election which makes Zimbabwe stand heads and shoulders above what has happened in Kenya so that we again become the example for Africa. So the Minister of Justice has got a very, very, very important task before him beyond the one of making sure that the Constitution is observed. He also must make sure that the elections which deliver the people's will is, are also transparent and accountable and engender confidence with the electorate. That's what we are, we are, we are so he has got a, among, in the new cabinet, he has got a lot of things uh, which, 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 which are yeah, in his plate, because this is the election season. Mm. Uh, let me see. I've got other things. Sorry, I've been. Yes, you, you, you want to take on, on this issue, the constitutional provision of the war veterans that we want to take. Okay. There is a, something which we need to comment on the, 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 the outrageous accusation against our armed forces that they can carry out a coup. We are a revolutionary army. A coup is anathema to a revolutionary army because we start from the people. Clearly, the people who are saying so, they don't have the manger, the booklet of the party ideology. And when it starts within the first family, the president is a teacher. He has an obligation to teach his partner. It's very important. She is extra constitutional. She doesn't exist in the constitution. The army has got a statute in the law of Zimbabwe. The police have got a statute in the law of Zimbabwe. The CIO have got a statute in the law of Zimbabwe. The prison services have got, these are constitutional bodies which are recognized, are statutory bodies which are recognized by the Zimbabwe constitution. 
Now we have somebody who, who has no local state, she has no position in the constitution of Zimbabwe. There is nothing which, call, which says a marriage is a constitutional, a, it gives constitutional powers, a marriage certificate. There's nothing in the constitution of Zimbabwe. Now she's pronouncing against constitutional uh, elect, I mean constitutional bodies. Bo constitutional bodies. Comrade President, this is wrong civic lessons to the populace of Zimbabwe. Can you come out openly and put it on record so that the respect which is accorded to our state institutions, which we have earned because of our tradition from the war, which we have earned because of our conduct since independence, remains upright in the eyes of the people of Zimbabwe, in the, in the eyes of the region, and in the eyes of the world. We can't have a person who has no locus stand in the constitution accusing constitutional bodies of trying to usurp power. They are the ones who want to try to usurp power. That's why they've been resorting to all these ad hoc arrangements of interface rallies, midnight uh, uh, cabals, all this. They are the ones who are extra constitutional. And this, the president has an obligation. You've built your name as an icon of the revolution, but more than as a statesman. This behavior where statutory bodies and constitutional bodies are challenged by jaywalkers <laughs> is unacceptable. Mm -hmm. uh, jaywalkers have no right to be st uh, attacking statutory institutions. I think by and large uh, that is the message which we want. We want the population of Zimbabwe to remain confident that the war veterans of Zimbabwe is the conscience of the country. They remain committed to the ideals of the Chimurenga revolution, of the Impium Fukela. That's what we remain committed to. We stand by that. We will not be intimidated by anybody to defend that position. But there's another dimension. We also feel more obliged that we should revive our solidarity links with our neighbors, those whom were in the trenches, so that they become fully aware of what's going on in Zimbabwe. Mm -hmm. That's our, friend in, our friends in the ANC, our friends in Swapo, our friends in Namibia, our friends in Angola, our friends in, in, in Mozambique. Because we see they've been spirited efforts by the G40. They take Mandy, we condemn that. They took Mandy to a Frerimo meeting <laughs> as a representative of the War Veterans Association. Oh, yeah. Last week, because Chombo is the Secretary General of the party, again abusing the, the, the and this is from the, from the, from the, also the Minister of, of Law and Order, of the police, you take somebody for whom a judgment has been granted by the High Court, you take him against those who should go. He was not in that war. It's really, in, if we can put it, it's like a Muslim trying to choose a bishop for a, a Catholic church. Uh -huh. yeah, that's not done, you know, you know, he does not belong, his G40 does not belong to this institution of the war veterans. Why does he want to choose it? And let me tell you something, I, and he's the Minister of Finance, but the other day I was at Heroes Acre. As the ministers were leaving, I saw some young people who were obviously hired. They started singing, going to their home as he was going marching down. Chombo Chewont, Chombo Chewont, to the minister. Uh -huh. Now, you see, Building a personality cult, yeah. Chombo Chewondo. Paidi wa kubatu wa Chombo Chewondo, wa Chombo amu, nakuda kuenda kuhondo. And I know because he was my schoolmate at Kutama. Eh, and he was not bright, I always repeat that. I mean, I have nothing against him. Eh, I have nothing against him getting the job of Minister of Finance. Eh, but he definitely had struggled passing all levels. That's a matter of record. That's why he became a teacher instead of going to all levels. So I have nothing against him. I'm only saying I know him. So he has neither, in my view, the brains, nor the guts to do what some of us did. Now he wants to say he call himself Chombo Chewon. No, that's, that's blasphemy. It's not right. <laughs> because the, you know, the, the, I saw it, you know, I'm sorry. This is, I'm not, I'm talking because I've got to keep the integrity of the war veterans and their exploits, military exploits, for the proud tradition of the Zimbabwe people. Mm -hmm. Now if everybody speaks, crops out from anywhere and calls himself a war hero, uh, that's not right, you, you know, for the, for the history of the country. You see, this is the herald. 
from 2014. I think the date is there, 6 September or something like that. A story has been running, including in Newsday and in the Daily News about Mutrangwa and a certain American. The American yet being referred to Mel Reynolds is a convicted, was convicted even last week by a judge in, was convicted by a judge in Chicago because he did not pay tax, it's a felon in America, to not pay taxes just like it is not. He did not pay. And he's taken to court by his own government and he gets convicted. But here, the G40 now want to ascribe him to me when I was the victim of this man. Because I was asked by his sponsoring businessman, a very an American black billionaire, to form a company with him because he was suspicious of him. Notwithstanding that, he still went behind my back and, inca and incurred heavy loans from the interview under the name of the company without my knowledge. Drew down the money, sent it to South Africa. So eventually, I mean, so he was cheating both me and his sponsor in America. But a lot of other Zimbabweans ask Miku's hotel. Where to ask them? Where to ask the Bronte Hotel? This man left all over the, he asked Rancho, the businessman. You know, they were all cheated money. Now, he's been convicted by the government. I gave the evidence to American lawyers. They phoned me two weeks ago. I mean, just over a week ago. The prosecutors. I said, that man is a criminal, he's a child molester, he's a purveyor of pornography, and he was deported by the government of Zimbabwe because of that. And he never paid the people he was claiming, the names of the employees he is talking about, they are not even Zimbabwean. There is no street which is called 270 Harare Street, where he was supposed to have his headquarters. So all the expenses which he's trying to claim he was doing in Zimbabwe for the people are false. He just pocketed the money, so it became income for him and he never declared the checks to his government. Yet the money was coming from what? From his sponsors in America. He gets convicted. The G40 dismisses the conviction of this man. They now run me as the person who is his friend. They even claim that I took some bribes to the president on his behalf. I mean, everybody knows that the president doesn't quite love me. <laughs> Everybody knows it. How I could take bribes to him, I don't know. And really to bribe a president for hundred thousand dollars, <laughs> like they claim. But I have the newspaper there for all you, for of you to see. This conman telling them that he's going to build a Wilton Hotel by East Twenty Four. Para pa 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 East Lab, East Lab, bro, what's East Twenty Four? That is the picture. And you see who is there in that picture? Mm -hmm. Chombo, Chombo. Muzembi, yeah. Webster Shamu, all the G4 being, co being conned by this man or being made to believe in him. Now they want to ascribe it to me. Now a picture tells a thousand stories. There is the story, you journalists. Yeah. You can now know who, to whom this man belongs. Yeah. He was trying to have me uh, foreclosed because he was already working with the G40 at that time, not me. So they have been on my quarry for a long time, this G40, and this is the evidence. I just want you to, so to, to, you know, when next time you are being given four stories, and I've given you all, including Zimra, when I asked Zimra, he cheated, this man cheated uh, Zimra. So and the IRS, is, uh, the American Internal Revenue Service is against him. Zimra here would also have taken if he was not deported. Because CIO said he was a child molester and he had overstayed, and the immigration said he had overstayed. So they thought it was more, it was just better to get him kicked out of the country than to claim to pursue charges against a church mouse pauper. <laughs> He's as poor as a church, church mouse, unless for the money which he stole. So that's I wanted to, you to, to know to do, because they want to smear my name by ascribing to me as my friend and business partner, a man who rightly belongs to them, whom they were consulting with, and goodness knows what else they were doing with him at that particular time. Because of Thank their you. records. Yeah, they have all sorts of records. We are not as rich as they are. We don't build 60 house mansions. Okay. We don't have wives. We have never been mm. in love with the fellow men. And we have never been in love with fellow men, like he says. We definitely, <laughs> even if we get divorced, we never have wives who feel 20 pages of properties <laughs> claiming that half of it is mine. <laughs> this is the story of this man. It's not our story. Uh, this is I, what I wanted to do.
So, on that good note, thank you, men of the press. We, we and women. And women of the press. We always feel, you no, know, even when you, we still feel that you've got a po we have a positive role to inform the people as well. And you, when you spare your time to come to our briefings, we are very happy. I said the Minister of Local Government is where investment starts. I do hope that for a change, now that is Minister of Finance, he can go to countries which have got surplus investment and try to bring investors, businessmen into the country. Because what this country is short of is capital. There's just no capital. Everything is potholes, everything is going down, everything. The markets of money are known. New York, London, Paris, Beijing, Shenzhen, Shanghai, Seoul, Singapore, Madrid, Moscow, Riyadh, Seoul, Mumbai, <coughs> Sao Paulo. These are places where money is in excess for capital. And that's where you tap in capital to build infrastructure so that a country can become modern. They've never, he never visited those places when he was Minister of Local Government. <laughs> Maybe now, because he's got the new job, he can visit them. Because if we don't go to those places, and, and Johannesburg, of course, if we don't go the, to those places to sell ourselves so that we are investor friendly, then this economy will never recover. Then the diaspora will keep into the diaspora until they become strangers to their own country. They become second generation diaspora. We don't want that. We will also continue to have children who, with degrees hanging around their mothers. We also continue to have young, fam young people who can never make a family. All of you know that young people are not making, are not finding, they are having challenges making a family. Because they have no, they have no income. This is, the, this is the tragedy which we have been visited of this country by the 20 years since G40 became ascended. Jonathan comes in 2000, Chopo comes in 2000, Kasukwere immediately afterwards. And for that whole period of time, no palpable prosperity which creates hope for young people. None. None whatsoever. So all of them hang around asking for money from the mother, even when he has got two or three degrees. The next thing is he's thinking he must go out of the country. All the countries of the world in Zimbabwe are applying for citizenship status. I mean, and how do we run a modern country like that? You know, this is, this is not proper. We, we, the, the, it's tragic that all young families are actually not being made possible because of the predicament of this economy. It is not punching as much as it should be. I mean, the joke which I heard the other day was, Wakuman, so that in an indirect small house, you move on 60 years or 70 years. These are young girls. Because I cannot go for my young people of my age because they have nothing to offer me. This is a tragedy about the situation which we have. It's sad, but this is the reality. And all of us know that. No, you know, this is, this is not right for a modern country. And Gwede Matashe captured it very well. You know, in, 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 in his stiff with the, our president. That's very real, what he was talking about. So the issues which we are talking about, which we raise here as war veterans, they resolve around the question of prosperity. Nobody sacrifices his life, only life, for no money, for no nothing, unless the cause gives the prospect of prosperity to your community, to your society, to your nation. That's what we did. We didn't fight for friends. We didn't fight for leaders. We didn't fight for parties. We fought for the prosperity of Zimbabwe. Yes. And that's still our rallying call today. Yes. And that, unfortunately, cannot be answered by the present behavior of the G4. It can't. The country is simply to change take. Thank you. Come in. Hello. Hi. Interview, hey? Yes. Please take a seat. Hello. Hello, sir. The person is here. Okay, just bring her in. Okay, sir.
Are you feeling hot? For gorgeous, elegant, and astounding look, modern women now use Pretty Women Cosmetics. Visit us at the following Pretty Women Cosmetic Outlets, Corner Angwa Street and Speak Avenue, Corner Nelson Mandela and Park Street, and at Corner Muyaneanda and Speak Avenue in Harare. Pretty, woman walking down the street. Pretty Women Cosmetics, where beauty begins. This podcast has been powered by Zim DITV News, a division of Sly Media Productions, specialists in social media streaming and in-house TV productions. This live cast has been powered by Zim DITV News, a division of Sly Media Productions, specialists in social media streaming and in-house TV productions. This live cast has been powered by Zim DITV News, a division of Sly Media Productions, specialists in social media streaming and in-house TV productions.